Hello everyone! Today is a great day. Today is one year since I have bought this Cetus X RTF kit. So it's time to make a review and check what was good and what was wrong about this drone during the year of flight. And before checking any pros or cons, let's check what should we expect out of this drone. And the first aspect is that it is a RTF kit, ready to fly, which means that when you buy it, you just plug it in and you should be able to fly. No more configurations. And why am I paying so much of attention to it? Because the modern world of the FPV is like more than more like a constructor. It's more like a DIY. And to prepare the good setup by yourself require you to have a set of knowledge. You should go through the internet, through the manuals to be able to compact uh, all together. And unfortunately, there are not so lot of uh, setups that would be ready to fly at the market at the moment. And just because of that, most of the companies who provide such setup use actually not the best solutions in, the, in it. Is it so for better FPV? Well, if you would be an expert in uh, FPV, you would probably buy another Google's, you would probably buy another remote control and maybe you would buy another drone, but there is one big aspect, one big pros about this RTF kit. It uses ExpressLRS radio link, which means that even if you fly it and decide to move to switch to better drone, it will match and you will be able to pair it to this remote which is not true for most of other RTF kits, which use not modern Express LRS radio link, but use old uh, FR Sky. So this is a very big valuable aspect as for me. And during this year, I have found out only one more RTF kit that use Express LRS and it is what, yeah, again, better FPV, Aquila kit, which is uh, the setup with a smaller drone for flying at home. And if you know any other RTF kit that would uh, use Express LRS protocol, please let me know, it would be interesting to make a review. So, as RTF kit, it's uh, another good, it fly well, it has better flight on board, so it's very configurable, you can plug any new device here, you can replace any part of it and it will work. Not like most of proprietary solutions that use only local parts, but it's rather universal and the connection radio link is universal and modern. So this is a good aspect about this RTF kit. And the second question, how well does it fly? Is it good for home or is it good for outdoor? And uh, when we check uh, parameters of this drone, we can see that it is one of the biggest uh, tiny whoops. It is uh, 85 ab or about that uh, millimeters between engines and the uh, nearest competitors it's maybe Meteor 85 or Mobula 8 and all of these whoops has double battery, 2S battery, which means more power. And as a result, sometimes it is too powerful for in-home flight, especially if you just learn to fly, it would be really, really difficult for you to learn, especially acro mode. And uh, for sure, you can reduce its power because it has a better flight on board. You can go to configuration, to pit tuning and uh, profiles, rate profiles and reduce the throttle limit that would make it not as fast for home <clears throat> and it is good. Also you can upgrade its software to the newer beta flight which would make it more stable in the air and when it uh, hits anything. 
But again, it is big and it is rather heavy, so for beginners in home it's not maybe the best solution. So if you are going to fly at home, I would recommend you to get the Aquila. It is proprietary drone, but it's also use Express LRS and uh, it is uh, very stable for flying at home for beginners. Next, flying outdoor. Uh, it will fly outdoor. Normally it can make any basic tricks like flips, rolls or whatever. It is not too powerful because we cannot expect too much of power from 2S, but it will be able to fly some basic uh, tricks. And uh, as for lengths and uh, how far can it fly, I have made few tests and on the minimal video transmitter power it can fly about 70-80 meters, but keep in mind it's not enough for flying outdoors. And on maximum video transmitter power I have flew for about half kilometer, but it can fly more. From comments from Telegram group, I have seen that someone has flew this drone about 1.2 kilometers, so which is rather good. And uh, again, it is not extra powerful, but it will be able to fly outdoors. So I would say that this drone is a kind of compromise between home and outdoor. It is possible to fly, to fly both, but for home maybe not so excellent. What's about its uh, pros and cons? Ah, yeah, there is one valuable aspect. If you are going to fly outside, there is a high chance that you can lose the drone. Maybe because of crash or because of losing the signal, and if it fl fly fall down somewhere to the grass, it will be very difficult to find this drone. So I strongly recommend if you fly outside to install the beeper or buzzer. I have used uh, the fly beacon. It is a uh, wireless uh, beacon. What does mean wireless? Be not because of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, no. It doesn't have one on board, but it means that it has its own battery and uh, you should not plug it to the controller, which is very good if you're a beginner, you just take the zip lock and put it here and it will work. Just don't forget to turn it on before you fly. And uh, what else about upgrades about this drone? I have installed the uh, bigger, better antenna, uh, with, uh, which is polarized. Does it make really big sense? Well, a bit. It will not give you bigger, longer range, but it will improve the quality of the signal and reduce the noise a bit. Not too much, but uh, a bit better it will be. But keep in mind that if you are changing uh, antennas, the most uh, of value will be if you change and set uh, RRCP or LRCP on both FPV and Google's. It's also possible to change. And what's about other upgrades? I have installed here this uh, Runcam Thumb. It is the lightest action camera that I have ever found. It is about 16 grams and it can fly enough well with this action camera. But uh, there are a few options. So, Sometimes, may, maybe 1 out of 5 or 1 out of 10, it may be not enough power from controller for this camera. And this camera does not have its own battery, it, uh, will it, it should be connected to, you, to your flight controller. So, it is a small chance that you will need extra power adapter to this camera. I will keep all links in descriptions. But it can fly and it can make you 4K footage with uh, gyro stabilization, so you can use uh, gyro flow to stabilize this video, which is rather good. And uh, what's about aspects? Uh, <coughs> 
By default, this drone uses uh, blue beta FPV batteries. But for this camera, it, this camera makes more weight and it may be difficult for drone to carry this uh, camera with uh, default batteries. So on some maneuvers, on flips or rolls, you can catch some prop wash. And to avoid such situation, you can use newer beta FPV batteries, which name Lava, and they have a higher uh, current rate. Uh, I will also leave a link in description to overview of the batteries. So if you are going to fly some tricks, I would recommend you to use that new orange lava batteries for this drone. Okay, uh, what cons might be for this drone? What's some thickness of this? <clears throat> From during the year of experience, so I can say that it may catch all overheat of video module. Well, it's not only about this drone problem, it's just general problem about FPV. If you turn it on for maximum power and just keep it stay here without flying, it will overheat. It's just typical for all FPV drones. So keep in mind that uh, it should, it would be better to use option uh, minimal video transmitter power until first arm. And it will probably resolve this problem for you. And uh, if you got this uh, video transmitter broken, you can uh, contact uh, Beta FPV support so they can sell uh, you the new set. It's not available in market, just in the shop, but uh, they've got one in their uh, storage so they can send it to you so that's maybe all about this drone so have a good flights and see you next time